All right. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Monroe, Monroe Live podcast. Um, for those of you who maybe just joined us for the first time, um, Monroe is a company that kind of specializes in lean design, design for manufacturing, benchmarking, costing, and um, cost avoidance for you know new product development. And today I have uh, Chris and Julie Ramsey with me, um, who just undertook like a very, very long trip um, in an EV. So if you guys want to kind of just well, I guess we'll start there. You know, um, you have a, an adventuring background. If you want to maybe talk a little bit about the adventuring aspect and then transition into, I guess, what piqued your interest in, in EVs. You want to start? You go. Okay. Um, right. So, well, the idea probably came about a decade ago, I think. Okay. Um, you first discovered a Nissan Leaf. Yeah. Um, and I think you were just curious about the car. You're just curious about technology. You're a car person anyway at heart, aren't you? You love, you've always had loved cars. So um, I think one day you were at work and you were doing some Googling and you came across the leaf. And what did you do next? Pretty much I was curious because Julie said it was very much about liking cars and then thinking mm -hmm. like probably people still think out there is like, what is this electric car thing all about? You know, where do you charge? What's, what's this, you know, how long does the battery last? All those kind of usual things. And so I thought, right, found a friend and said, should we go on a road trip? I've got an idea. We're going to go and take this electric car and go on a road trip. So that's what we did. We drove all around, all the way around the UK to three UK capital cities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, the car had about 65 miles of range. Um, there was barely any charges in the country at the time. And we had some challenges to say the least, um, sure. but we had a great time. You know, I came back from understanding the technology, just thought I've, I'm, I get the technology. I get what this is about. And being a, being a Scot, I love saving money. And I've driven around the entire UK and not save, not spent a penny on fuel. It cost us more <laughs> for, for a sandwich than it did cost us for a charge. So I kind of thought, mm, I want an electric car. So I think at that point I told you I was going to buy a Nissan Leaf and change my petrol car. And like you say, that was about a decade ago now. Um, and that car, that Nissan Leaf 24 kilowatt hour Tecna is still sitting on our drive today, yeah, 2014 it's, plate. It's uh, still going strong and it's our daily run around. And uh, I think at that time, a decade ago, I had no idea about electric cars. And, you know, just I think you introduced it to me. I was a bit nervous at first about it. I think like most people are, it's like new technology, having to change the, your lifestyle, your way of driving. So, um, yeah, I think... Um, I think it got to the point where Chris said, let's go for it. Let's switch out. We were a two car family at the time. Let's switch out one of our cars to an EV, give it a go. That's what we did. And then um, we ended up fighting over the electric car and who was driving <laughs> it. And then um, ended up like the, um, the non-petrol car was on the drive, wasn't getting utilized. And that's one the point that we knew that, hey, we, we love yeah. the technology. We love EVs. Let's switch out both our cars. And um, yeah, it's a uh, history from there. Yeah. I mean, and from there, journeys just got bigger and bigger and bigger and bolder and endurance drives and everything. And then 2017, we, I left my job and we, me and Joey decided to drive from London to Mongolia on a 30 kilowatt hour <laughs> Nissan Leaf, as you do. <laughs> yeah, the Mongo Rally. So that was kind of a springboard to go into the, the journey was a springboard to go into the Mongo Rally. And then the Mongo Rally was a springboard to kind of do bigger, bolder and just kind of trying to do something to dispel all those myths out there just to let people know the range of the nissan leaf was about 90 miles at the time sure so driving from london to mongolia which is about ten thousand miles in a 90 range 90 mile range electric vehicle um a lot of people were like you guys are crazy you guys are not going to do this um you know and, <laughs> and they all thought we were bonkers and and we did it in 56 days. As Julie says, the rest is history, as in why we're sitting here today chatting to you. Yeah. So I guess I'm assuming why you chose um, the Nissan area has, has to do a lot with essentially the LEAF and essentially you finding that very early on. Um, was there any other vehicle in the running for this trip? I guess, I mean, you're quite right with regards to the, choosing the area. I mean, there was, there was a stage where we, we approached Nissan and the, the area was not around at that time. Um, and then we had to go back to the drawing board. Um, and then as, as we were talking about earlier on, unfortunately, you know, everything happened in the world that did, you know, as we've had for the last few years with the pandemic and various things. 
so it kind of put didn't put things on hold but it makes it a lot difficult for us to then carry on the project and kind of find partners and find people involved but um it then came actually a, a choice meeting a chance meeting um at a stage robert wells fully charged live we were there doing a talk on the stage and then one of the uh heads of motorsport for nissan was there on the stage with us and after that we got off stage and we had a conversation about pole to pole and, and that reignited the fact because the area was there and he was like saying look we'd like to look at getting involved in this project and i was like great because we have the history with you guys mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. we are nissan leaf and boat uh, owners and everything mm -hmm. we would love to do this for you guys mm -hmm. and it very quickly it turned around and they said yes we want to get involved mm -hmm. so I will never say the pandemic and things were a good thing, but for us, it, sure. kind of, it was very fortuitous in, in the sense that it extended the period to when the Aria came around because it was the perfect vehicle for us. And, you know, the thing with Nissan is that in terms of a brand, we were, were very aligned in our outlook and our mission. I mean, their motto is daring to do what others don't. And when we did the Mongo Rally, when we'd done the pole to pole, it's very much aligned with daring to do what others don't in terms of pushing the boundaries, pushing the innovation and just um, trying new things, testing new things. And um, yeah, so I felt like the, you know, that kind of a um, partnership with Nissan was, was a uh, really, yeah, really it just, worked, it worked for, really well for our for project us. and um, our ethos in, in, in this thing. No, it's, it's very interesting. And, and we, we had an area here. I didn't get a chance to look at it because I was on another project, but for years, I've been advocating like anytime we have someone that comes in, like whether it's on road, off road, for trying to get coolant runs and like the the battery, like the channels, because you're using extrusions, they're they're already there, um, and they they did something very similar to that, which which was very cool to see, and I was actually very very bummed um, that I didn't have a chance to see it on the hoist, even look at it. Um, I believe uh, Jordan and Walker had a chance to kind of go through it and look at it, but. Um, I guess, can we, can we talk a little bit about the modifications of the vehicle? So when this whole thing kicked off, uh, Eric sent me the, you know, link to your page and I saw it and I was like, oh my, it's all tire, you know? So, um, so we'll probably throw a picture or two in this, but essentially it's a, it's a Nissan area with the fenders cut and, uh, I think the 39 inch tires, you know, stuffed into it. So, um, aside from the size of the tires, can you go through, you know, a series of what was modified on the vehicle from a stock? A stock one yeah i mean and and effectively it is 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 essentially a stock vehicle outside of the 39 inch tires so when you look at the drivetrain the suspension system um the battery system it's all stock it's all factory area and we've not done extra insulation or anything to the battery because one of the things that we like to do with our projects like we did with the mongari leaf it was literally just a nissan leaf with the back seats taken out and a slight suspension lift so the idea is to show people that essentially a factory vehicle outside of modifications to make it capable of going into polar regions, for example, um, is, is, has done this expedition. So everything was their stock and the guys at Arctic trucks, um, in Iceland, who are the specialists in, in Arctic vehicles, <clears throat> excuse me, what they did was they actually cut open the wheel arches. They remolded the remolded the whole of the inner wheel arch to accommodate the 39 inch tire as much as possible, and then have added the fender flares. And then there was the three tow hitch of recovery points on the front and back. Yep. As you see sticking out. And those were to basically, yep, tow, pull us out if we get stuck in some really deep, thick snow and can't get out of those. And also jack the car up in case we need to do any tire replacements or maintenance. Sure. Um, and then it was a skid plate underneath the full length of the car. Okay. Um, and what, if, you, if you recall, like what was the standoff and material of the skid plate? It's just aluminium, uh, okay. aluminium plate. Okay. Um, interesting. Cause uh, I'm not sure if you've ever seen like, you know, the bottom of lightning. Um, but it, it looks like a, like an M wrap or like a mine resistant vehicle. It, it's a little bit about their strategy, but you know, the battery sitting in an isolated cradle and very, very deep drawn stampings. It's, um, it has very robust protection, you know, underneath. So I was just kind of curious. Yeah, the um, area, what we did, what, well, what we did, I, I didn't, the Arctic Trucks guys, what they did was they added a little bit of a subframe underneath the car so they can, okay. the skid plate would sit of, down below the battery. Um, okay. so it was just to kind of give that extra uh, cushioning, essentially extra bit of layer between any kind of impact. And did you ever have an, an impact 
on the skid plate that kind of encroached in that zone? Oh yeah, we did, oh, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> Plenty. I, mean, I mean, the best way to describe it is extreme off-roading up in the Arctic, because you can imagine there's no roads. Um, sure. It's just pure kind of wilderness, um, boulder fields, um, pressure ridges, you know, you name it. It was rough, rough terrain up in the north. And um, yeah, it, we did come down on the car quite a few times. So that skid plate protection plate has actually come in very well. And when you actually look at the underside of the car now, you'll see all the dents and scratches. Yeah. Um, from, it's got some good wall from the north. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But in addition to the mod, well, again, it's not really yeah. a mod, but in addition to the car, we actually added a rooftop tent box onto the top of it. So uh, it allowed us to uh, camp wherever we could at uh, various campsites along the way. So just to make it more difficult for us and reduce the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the range, range of the car, we thought we'd sure. put this uh, huge rooftop tent box on, but uh, we added that as well. We're probably speaking to the right people in this sense and saying, you know, we did probably everything you shouldn't do to an EV to affect its range. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if we could just, what were you getting? So obviously you were at 39s, then I believe you went to 35s when the said, nope, always. Okay. I was just reading through the journal and, uh, it mentioned it, but I was looking at every picture. I'm like, these all just look huge, like 39s to me. None of these look like 35s. The original you know? plan was to look, to swap them out to 35s. Um, but I think when we kind of, we drove with the car, we found the kind of what we were comfortable with in terms of range and the distances that we had to cover to get to the next charging station. And it kind of worked out. Okay. Yeah. We're kind of borderline. But we thought, like, in know, some areas we were, yeah. Yeah. So um, rather than go through the logistics and expense of switching out the tires, you know, and to be fair, it looks cool, right? With the 39. So, <laughs> sure. <yeah. laughs> and, and that's the thing. We kind of figured out that the range was around about, uh, normally would be given as like 150 miles. On average. We, on average. We could get further in certain areas, depending on the terrain, depending on the topography and various things. Um, so sometimes we, in some cases, we actually got up to 200 miles. Sometimes we got like 170 or 180, but 150 was what we always worked on as like, let's make sure we don't go any further than sure. 150 to a charger just in case. Um, so it was kind of a, a, a safety blanket for us in that sense. But we almost, what, half the range or yeah. not probably just under um, the range of the car. So I think the standard area is mm -hmm. about 280 miles, 300 miles. I believe that's close, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can see the the range drop by making by uh, applying those modifications. We even just taking the rooftop tent box off that actually made a big impact, uh, quite a, an impact of range as well at times. So, so it's all these little things that we did, but it was all to show that the vehicle is capable. But also for us, to, we had to live in this vehicle right for sure for like ten months. Um, yes, we had hotels at times, or we had campsites, but we kind of lived in that car. It was our hotel, so we had to make it comfortable. Yeah. 